Are you afraid to get started with a career in nails? Are you in a current unfulfilling work situation and dream about making something happen for yourself in the world of nails? Well, what if I told you that to get started, you do not need to make any big commitments right now. Nothing like quitting your day job, no taking out any big loans for nail school, no nail tech license, and heck, not even a nail business license, whatever that may be. My guest today is an example of all of this. Her name is Rachel, and Rachel started her now career in nails out of pure interest. She's allowed me to be part of her journey via some brand certifications and the Master Gel Nails program. She's gone from hobby stage to press on business owner to nail school and now to being a licensed independent nail stylist in her own suite. And not only this, Rachel has also been invited to host and teach a lesson in my press on course, the Press Ons Lab to share her expertise around building a Shopify website. I'm sitting down with her today so that she can tell you and walk you through her journey. Let's get started. Hey there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Paola of paolaponsanails.com and I help nail pros and enthusiasts, perhaps like yourself, create thriving businesses as specialized gel nail stylists. If you'd like to continue growing with me, I wanna invite you to subscribe to this channel and also my weekly newsletter using the link in the description box below. Rachel, welcome to the channel. I am so happy to have you and I'm just gonna give a little bit of a background with Rachel. Rachel, I've met maybe one to two years. You can let us know in your story as we get started how you actually found out about me. Um, and you've taken a few programs with me. I've been following your journey for at least one year. I want to say solid, maybe going on two. And you've taken programs like the Master Gel Nails course, the Cocoa certification, and I think you're also inside the Press Ons lab. So now rachel is owning her own studio she owns her own studio her own business she's gone to nail school so she's grown by leaps and bounds and we are just going to hear from you so rachel welcome tell us your story how did you get started into nails hi first off thank you so much for having me um so my journey began when i first saw a nail polish drawer and it was full of nail polish and it was from my cousin's apartment and I was mesmerized. I was the kid that wanted the 60 crayon box because <laughs> I've always been obsessed with colors. And so I thought that was pretty neat. So in high school, every Sunday, I would make it a point to do my nails. It was like a ritual and it was a way to relax and get ready for the busy week. And then when I started working at the movie theaters, I tried like, I, tried, I stepped it up a level and I tried different nail art designs based on the big movies that were coming out. And it was nothing intricate because I didn't have any nail art brushes and I just had like this pen that I could use that was regular nail polish, but was somehow in a pen form, but it worked kind of. <laughs> and then once the pandemic happened, lockdown, a lockdown occurred and we, I got furloughed from my job. So I was stuck at home and I started watching YouTube videos. I think I was watching music videos, but then nail art videos started showing up. And then I watched one after the other and then I came across your channel and you spoke about Japanese gel brands. So I thought this was pretty cool. And then more specifically, I got into the nail industry with Press On Nails. I saw both your videos on how to start a, bit nail, a Press On Nail business. And then in the year of oh, 2021, I didn't want anything to start in 2020 because it was like a depressing year. I launched my Press On business, started my Instagram page to kind of keep track of what I was doing. And then I went back to work. So having that press on business was kind of like a side hustle. And by that time, I also kind of knew that I wanted to be a nail tech. So I started saving up money at the job because I didn't know when it was going to happen, but I, I did want to become a nail tech because I was so fascinated with all the things you could do with nail art products. So yeah, I went to school and then here I am now, fortunately owning my own mini studio. Very cool, Rachel. So pretty much you can say that you, found me on YouTube, um, just out of curiosity, doing your nails and playing with nails and whatnot. So you really didn't do anything in 2020, you say. You just kind of thought about going into nails, but not really, right? So then you did a press on business, kind of kept you warm in the industry, right? Um, but like you said, by then you knew you wanted to do to you wanted to do now so you know it was a nice first stepping stone so that you can definitely get you know into this industry so 
let me ask you this. Um, you did something before you became licensed actually. And I want to say somewhere in between the period that you were doing press songs and also becoming a, going to nail school. Okay. Uh, number one, you did, you took it step by step. You didn't quit your day job, right? Like you said, you were working at a movie theater, right? And mm -hmm. how long you've been working? Did you pick up that gig because you wanted to, um, had you been doing that for a, a long time? Um, did you pick it up because you were like, I need this gig to, you know, finance my education? Or again, were you already there? I was already there. I was employed since 2018. And then um, I got promoted to a management position. So with that extra income, I was like, let's save this up for nail supplies, more nail polishes, <laughs> and eventually school, because I knew that schooling was a big expense. I looked into different schools around the area and it was a big chunk of money. And I did not want to pull out a loan. And luckily, the school I went to didn't require that you pull out money through FAFSA and you can make monthly payments. So keeping that job was definitely beneficial in regards to being financially stable and saving up money for growing this business. Very nice. So was that a full time job or just a part time? It was full time when I came back from the lockdown because it was a management position. So it was like 40 to 50 plus hours per week. Wow. Okay, cool. And like I say, at that same time, concurrently, you're keeping this press on business because you want to stay in, warm in the industry um, and really, you know, get better. But we're going to talk about how you also started incorporating um, complimentary services to friends and family so that you can continue to stay warm, right? So the whole point that I'm trying to highlight with your story, Rachel, is that you took it step by step. You were like, all right, this is the end goal. I want to be a licensed nail tech. I need to go to school but I don't want to take out a loan. You know, I want to take it step by step. And um, that means that I don't, I should not quit my day job. But I also don't want to just go to nail school, kind of be cold about what I want to do, don't know what I want to do, you know, and you started doing press ons And then you got even a little bit more specific and you became interested. Um, I kind of contagious, I'm kind of contagious with the Japanese shell thing. <laughs> So I make sure that you like it as much as I like it. So that's why I kind of teach a lot about it because Japanese shell and for those that don't know, Japanese shell is like soft potted gel formulas. So they're formulas primarily in pots. This is the more traditional way in Japan to apply nails and you can do anything with it. You can do gel manicures, gel structures and gel extensions and um, nail art, of course, primarily. I think if anything is more popular in Japan, it's like nail art over just um, gel structures and whatnot, but you can do it with that too. So you didn't quit your job. You, you keep it, you know that you want to meet a financial goal because you're going to nail school, you keep the press ons business. And then that one thing that I was talking about that you did in between the press ons and going to nail school and you, you're still doing it, which is so beautiful and brave of you is you started doing something unconventional that I've actually never seen anyone do that's been interested in nails. You went to a farmer's market, like a vendor's market, and you set up a booth there. Tell me about what you're feeling. And then you show up and just tell us what happens and how that's even still working for you to this day, even though you have your own suite, like super interested. Yeah, so everything that I try or I want to accomplish, I have a game plan. So when I started the press on business, there were certain things to know. You cover it in your videos as far as like what legal things you need to do as far as like getting your tax documents uh, lined up and the materials that you need. And then I wanted a different way to advertise my business and that was going to the people. <laughs> and I was a little nervous because you're you're talking to them face to face and you got to sell your product. You got to make them aware of what press ons are because at the time and i still feel like at this time it's not completely popular because people still go to the salon or they don't go to the salon at all so i had been to the farmer's market a couple of times and i realized that it was like hand-drawn goods handmade goods and of course there's produce and i was like okay nails can i think apply to this farmer's market because i, I read the guidelines and i hand paint everything so I was like, okay, let's try it for one day. And if it doesn't work, well, it doesn't work. And if it does work, then we'll just see where we go from here. So if I hadn't backed away from it or from trying it out, I wouldn't be where I am because I, you can't let your fear get in the way. Absolutely. So that day I felt very intimidated because I'm going 
I'm with like hundreds of other vendors and they sell produce like I love this. I was fresh got like really good stuff. And then there's nails and then like food and nails like how is that gonna, <laughs> how is that going to go? But luckily it's a it's a craft. So people were very supportive and encouraging and they were complete strangers. They're like, "Oh, tell me more about this." And so that day I surpassed my my sales or like what I paid for that spot, I surpassed that and I sold nine things. And as and far as if I could just stop you there, Rachel. So one thing that you told me before we got on our interview was that you were one of the ways how you, you got rid of this fear and intimidation. You were like, how much is the booth rent that day? Okay, if I can make that back, I'm happy, right? That was your your so how did sales you don't have to tell us the number of like the amounts, but you can tell us the uh, maybe the amount of items that you sold. Um, the point is there were sales, right? On your first day at the market. Right. So before that too, I also wanted to incorporate cuticle oil because that also promotes healthy nail growth. So it was a combination of pressed on nails and cuticle oils. And it was a total of nine sales that day. So I was really happy and I was like, okay, I guess, I guess this kind of is working. So I buy all slots. Yeah. And then after that, I just keep on buying more slots and then we continue to grow. It's nice to see familiar faces and meet new faces. And then I also get the opportunity to meet local business owners as well. And so you can say that you have a few regulars from the market, which is, is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes, from the market and even people that follow me on Instagram and who have purchased online, who now go in person to the market to see the nails like fake um, in person, because it's different from having yeah. an online store to being at a market. That is so, so cool. And maybe at the end of the, in this interview, we can talk about some strategies on how you can even grow that business if you still want to a, a tiny bit now that you have your a studio so I can supplement your income but I think it's great and I you didn't tell me you were doing this so I'm following you I love to follow my students on uh, Instagram and um, they're like my favorite accounts to follow our student accounts just to see their journey and so I clicked your story and I'm like oh she's at a market what that is so bold and your booth was so quaint so beautiful and it was just it was just great because here you are like I knew that you wanted to go to nail school I believe I knew that you had already taken a few courses and so you're really like just going with what you have right now you're like i'm not in nail school but i do have this press home business and i'm not completely hung up whether it like thrives or dies we can say but it is my warm-up point and if i'm going to take people in person like clients this is also going to the market is a great way to not be intimidated with my first new client at the studio and whatnot so you're really warming up all the aspects of customer service providing a service right and uh, playing with your products just because you're doing it through your press ons and whatnot mm -hmm. so that is great and i know you told me earlier that you're like a very shy person so the fact that you're taking everything step by step and just little by little and working with what you have that is exceptional and commendable indeed, Rachel. So I'm very, very pleased with your progress thus far. Now, you, and I say thus far because you are definitely still there, you know? <laughs> so you're still making this work and it's not that it's not working. You're just taking it step by step again, the next step and the next step and the next step. Mm -hmm. So you get licensed, you go to school, you get licensed. And um, that was pretty quick, by the way. I thought it was kind of quick. How long was that your school it was program? Four months four months mm -hmm. I guess that's true and you did by this time had you quit your job at the cinema yes it was a little tough I tried to I tried to stick it out at the beginning but it was tough because school was in the morning to mid-afternoon and then I had to go from as soon as I got out of school to work and then close to closing time oh. well there wasn't that much time to really focus on my press on nail business and then get enough rest but I I think I stayed for a couple of weeks and then I put in my two weeks notice and decided to stick that out to save more money <laughs> and then yes. just took it on from there. And I really tried with the, the press on nail business to, to continue being at the farmer's market because that was also a financial stability option to have. Right. And all we need, even when you just have one client or a few and you're in your own personal space. Like for example, I always just stayed in a, I rented space within a full service salon. So I didn't go the suite route, at least not, I didn't, I did nails like five years in the salon. I think eventually I would have ended up in my own suite, but I was just comfortable where I was and my coworkers were like, so cool. So I like that. But having something else, even if it's not like a big money maker, like for you was like, press weren't making you like six figures, you know? Um, 
but it was still providing enough income to just be like, you know what? I'm, I get to take this money and pay my suite until I start building my clientele. Take this money and take my suite you know, or pay my suite, right? So I always like having a buffer even now in my business of like, okay, while I work on this big project that I'm not gonna get paid for, what else is running in the background that's making me money? And so I do have my own buffers to do that even until now. So that's great. Some people, again, I just wanna highlight that some people just think that they have to quit it all and just go for broke and go into this industry. Not at all. I was a server when I was in middle school and that's how I pretty much paid um, for my supplies and all of that. And you don't need a lot of supplies like at all. You just definitely have to niche down. Um, you knew that you wanted to work with soft potted gels and so, and even just soft gels in general because Japanese and Korean brands, they're soft gel. And you just kind of, you're like, this is my niche. I love it. It defines you know my style it helps define my style and these are the products that i want to work with so that's great and you decide no commission salons uh because like you said prior to our interview you do the math and it just doesn't add up whether your commission and then you know you're gonna get paid x amount or you know work on your press on business it's gonna make a little bit of money and that's gonna help you supplement your studio so that's correct right rachel tell us about how you chose working for someone straight out of school not doing that versus going independent so there was a pros and cons list that i made and i kind of make that with any big decision i have to do like is it going to be worth it in the long run it might work in the short run but is it going to be worth it in the long run um so again with commission and doing specializing in nail art the higher the service amount is the more money you're giving back to the salon um, so the less money you take, I mean, you would take a good amount, but it's not all yours as opposed to having your own mini salon. So you keep all your finances when you're here, but you just have to keep in mind like the weekly rent and all that stuff, the insurance cost, the website maintenance cost. And then going back, if I wanted to work at the salon, I'd have to do their services. Here at the studio, I get to create my own service menu, set my own prices. And one of your courses actually helped me with that. I didn't want to offer like, 30 different services <laughs> and I kind of narrowed it down to make it simple on people. I feel like it's still a little complex just because I have to provide more examples of what tier one nail art means, what tier two nail art means. And then um, also I, I do have a niche with the Japanese gels and Korean gel brands that I use and I don't do pedicures. I just specialize in manicures. Totally. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's good that you know that now, unlike me, where I was like, I'll just do pedicures because we're supposed to, right? People have hands and feet. And so how are you going to discriminate against feet? <laughs> you know, that was like my thought, you know, and I did them and I did them well. And I always, when I left doing nails in the salons, I was like, I should have charged way more for feet. Just anyone out there who was like specialized and you want to do pedicure services, there are more work. It does require that you stock up on more products. So I do recommend an increase in price for sure. Um, but that's outside of this conversation. But now that you mentioned it, yes, you don't have to do pedicures. People like take it from me. <laughs> I'm telling this my, to myself, you don't have to do pedicures. And if you do, um, if you want to offer like a little bit more of a premium service, whether that's because you do e-file petties or you offered a specific product line for your pedicures, then do definitely keep that in mind that they should be definitely more premium price. So it, it can definitely be a money maker. But in the beginning, especially when you're shy, right? Like you're it's gonna be shy to do pedicures on someone you've like never met. And um just ease yourself into that aspect of the business. If you want to do pedicures, it doesn't have to be now. So I wanted to highlight your story, Rachel, because you're a great example of taking it step by step. As I've mentioned earlier, like you're like, you know what, I'm shy or, or you know, I don't want to do pedicures. Like, you know that and you just go with that decision. And then as your business grows, whatever it may be, whether it's at the market, whether it's your press on online, whether it's your studio, you just kind of go with the next step what what is the next possible and you're a planner you say you put your pros and your cons and you analyze things and that's also very good so you get to decide on your services you have a uh selective list of services that you offer your niche down your niche is in premium soft gels that's what you do um specifically those made in like japan and korea and that's because they kind of infuse a whole culture into their products and all of that and i tend to really like them for that also um let's talk about we talked about your suite your suite is within a 
I, I, we were having trouble discussing these, but it's not like a chain. It's not like Sola Salon Suites. It's not Phoenix Salon Suites. It's just a building with um, beauticians and also wellness practitioners, right? And you rent a suite in one of these places, correct? Yes. Very good. You have your own key. You have your own access. You come in and you go as you want to, right? Yes. Another perk about being in your own mini salon is that you get to make your own hours. Um, so I kind of made mine in the later morning to pass working hours because people are at their jobs most of the day, like in the mornings. And then I get to, I don't know, set my own schedule. I have a, a booking app as well. So I'm aware of like when people will come in. Lovely. That's very important because um, when you're going from nail school, it's counterintuitive. You're like, well, I have to go work for someone and build my clientele. And here's something that um, potential nail techs needs to know. When you're trying to build your clientele, the way to do it is not necessarily by going to someone else's salon and build your clientele there. Why? Because if the salon is hiring you and they're attracting the customers, you're kind of, you know, um, feeding off of what they're paying money to supply and keep their business open. So the correct way is if you're in a commission based salon, you want to invite people. You still want to be doing your marketing outside of the salon. You're talking to people in restaurants where you go shop, you know, wherever it may be on social media. And you tell them now that they found you, you take them to the salon that you're legally working on and um, you do their nails there. Right. That's like how you do it. Now, if the salon is the one doing the marketing and getting the clients for you, then it's not ethical for you to take the clients and then take them to your own suite. So I just want to clarify that because people kind of think that, oh, in order to build my clientele, I just have to go work for someone else. They'll provide the clients and then I'll take them to my suite or my space. All right. And it's like, no. <laughs> now, I did skip a part um, earlier. And one of the other things that you did was, and I always recommend this, is you worked on friends and family and we want to be clear about who we work with when we're at home friends and family at home to continue to stay warm in the industry because like you said earlier you were like um working on press-ons and working on real people is completely different absolutely 100 they don't press-ons don't have uh epidemic or cuticle skin uh they usually come everyone every press-on has nice nail beds you know but clients don't always have like the best nail beds so I want to make clear also now that we were talking about legalities is that when you run a business most of the times in the states at least you cannot work from home without some legal specifications being in place like in certain states you can if you're built if you have an actual literal wall not just some makeshift wall that separates the, the home and the business and there's a separate entrance that's usually the case but also your county may not allow foot traffic or free to run a business from home so i just want to make that clear for anyone out there who's considering to start from home that's not going to play well to your you know to your strategy because people first of all in today's day and age after 2020 they don't really want to come to your home you know and um are intimidated by you know getting sick and so on and so forth but not only that like they don't have a visual of what working at your home looks like. Does that mean that your dog or cat, or maybe they're allergic to a dog or cat, is running around? Does it mean that your children are there? Does it mean that we're working at your kitchen table? It's just not going to, from the get-go, provide a professional environment. And I know, I know there's gonna be a lot of heartbrokens, right? So what is the correct way? Well, the co correct way is to do complimentary services with your friends and family, right? You can't get in trouble for working on your friends and family. You're not running a business. You're you have a hobby. Everyone has a hobby, right? And that's it. Your friends and family, by the way, can be three people. <laughs> you know, we're not going to increase the foot traffic, obviously, in your city by inviting, you know, the community. But three to five people, uh, your closest friends and family, and like, can I practice on you? And most of them will say yes. I know I practice on my sister like all the time, you know. Um, and so that is essentially the way you work from home. It's just you just practice on yourself. A friend and a family member that's it like three people and that's what you did also right you carved out a corner in your room rachel take us through your your setup there at home it first started off with a little desk and then the desk wasn't big enough for the materials i was getting for the press-ons or even working on my family and friends so then i got a desk and this manicure table that i have now after i saved enough money to get one i was super happy and so i started practicing 
on them and i encourage them to be honest with me not brutally honest because sometimes family members can be <laughs> brutally honest but i just want to be honest i get it <laughs> yeah like simmer down <laughs> but no i just wanted to make sure that i wasn't hurting them because as we've mentioned before like working on press on then people are not the same thing you're working with live tissue and skin and you got to shape the nails and you're using your e-file as well and so I just never advertised that I was offering services on my Instagram account that I was, oh, come over so I can practice on you. Cause it's one thing to have like strangers come into, well, for me, it was in my bedroom. I don't want to thing. Exactly. Like, oh, here's a bed and okay, are you sure this is? Yeah, it is kind of peculiar. Things are getting a little strange An now. An awkward situation to avoid. <laughs> Rachel, I'm going to go from there because um, I remember now to this interview we're talking about how this happened you know like your friends and family your, your sister i think you know get your nails done by you and you practice it on yourself and um this was really cool because this is for anyone watching that is currently in school or is planning to go on school one thing that you did to kind of build um attention momentum and demand for you and your brand uh, and we'll talk about your brand in a moment i haven't even mentioned the name but we will get to that um is you said you do you do your your sisters for example and then another friend and then they obviously go into the world and they shop and they eat and then they get compliments on their nails and they kind of hand them your business or your information of oh her name is this and this is her instagram right and she they would say she's currently in nail school and if you want to get your nails done you can go to nail school and get your nails done by her right or purchase purchase press on nails as well or purchase press on and all they had was your instagram information and your nail school information and you 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 did it that was very it's very slick very not slick you know like slimy slick. very slick very professional and that is the correct way to do it once you're in nail school you, you're working on friends and family you send them out it's not a bad idea to get a business card started definitely a nail profile you can't get a if you don't have the budget to print cards yet or you don't know what your name is going to be and the colors and don't worry about that get your instagram profile only for nails and then that is the business card all someone has to do your friend and your family has to do is write your, your instagram handle right and check them out and then you post the updates on how nail school is going where are you going to start a business so that was a beautiful and unique from you rachel and you know that just shows that you're you are definitely cut out for this you have that business mentality about things like okay how with what i have how can i continue to grow so beautiful rachel we're gonna end it there i want you to tell me if anybody is watching right now and is either contemplating a career in nails is currently in nail school or wanting to go to nail school or perhaps they're considering any of my programs or perhaps they finished nail school and they don't know what to do next any parting words anything that you would say to encourage maybe the young rachel rachel in 2020 to just keep pursuing their dream as a uh, nail tech if that's what it, that is right so i would say to be patient yet persistent things come within time as long as you put the work into it um for me it was knowing what my niche was at the beginning and then transitioning like okay i want to be a nail tech how what are the steps that i have to do this legally <laughs> and professionally <laughs> and then mm -hmm. also invest in yourself because the courses that i've taken with paula have been beneficial in regards to knowing what to do or what to say and what information to provide you want to invest in yourself because you'll see how your nail art or your entrepreneurship will grow so like paula said have an instagram page and you'll see how far you've come even from one year or two years so not only are you investing in yourself you're investing in your future business absolutely and rachel where can my audience find you so they can learn more about your journey maybe there are locals in your area where are you located you know your state your city and um let us know your business handle, your Instagram handle, so that they can follow your journey and your work. So the business name is Vistosa Nails, and my tag for all social media platforms is at Vistosa Nails. And then um, when I'm at the market, it's at the Upper Valley Market um, and the west side of El Paso, Texas. That's where I'm located. And then my salon studio area is by the downtown area. So there is parking. <laughs> parking is all right. Not That's important. <laughs> yes, it is. That was a big perk in coming here.
it is otherwise clients will be late they can't find you they can't find parking well it was lovely having this interview with you rachel thank you so much for taking the time and really sharing your story because again there is so many people in all of different stages that we talked about you and your business today so i think this is definitely going to help you so thank you again for carving out time and you're now busy schedule right you got like a couple of different business going on so i'm very yes. happy and i will continue to follow your journey online Thank, Thank you so you. much for having me. It was an honor. Thank you.